Microplastics? Say what? What are those? Well, if we're going to define them, microplastics are any plastic found in a size range of 0.5 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters, and that's a general definition that science has been using lately. So what research has been done so far with microplastics? Maybe it's all known. We already know all about it. Well, right now, what I did is I took a quick Google Scholar search, and unscientific, of course, and I, should, I found the following results. 461 microplastic research articles that were found from the United States. The vast majority dealt with marine studies, ocean studies on the outskirts of the United States. However, there were 10 river microplastic research studies that occurred in the United States. Two of those were from California, three from Illinois, five from the East Coast, and zero from Kansas. Hmm, nothing's being done with microplastics in rivers in Kansas. So, what does any research show so far? Okay, nothing in Kansas, right? But uh, plastic research study that was done by McCormick in 2014 up by uh, Chicago showed that urban rivers represent an overlooked and potentially important source of microplastics to downstream environments. So in other words, urban areas might be putting microplastics uh, into the river. Well, we don't know if there's microplastics in the river uh, if we aren't looking for them. So, wait a minute though. Generally in science, if you're going to have to do some kind of complicated study, it's going to take a lot of expensive equipment. Um, shouldn't it take a lot of expensive equipment? Well, the answer to that question could be yes, but we found recently that the answer is no. A group out of Canada have used baby tights from Target to sample for microplastics in the ocean. They achieved similar results with the baby tights, roughly three dollars, compared to a regular manta ray net that was a manta net that was thirty-five hundred dollars. Well, that's interesting. So, how can you get your students to do uh, real science in your area? That's one of the big obstacles a lot of science teachers have. Well, how about sampling your local rivers for microplastics? What equipment are you going to need? Pretty simple. Maybe a two-liter plastic bottle, a pair of baby tights, some rope or twine. A simple dissecting scope of 20x power, some curiosity of course, and students that want to actively research their own rivers. The two, little, two liter plastic bottle is essentially opened up and attached to some baby tights. Let's take a look at You need to find a river of course. So I've got a river here. This is the Arkansas River as it runs, through, runs, runs beside Derby, Kansas. I've constructed a pair of baby tights opened up a two liter bottle, cut half of it open, the final part is stuck into the top of the baby tights. The baby tights are essentially attached with some twine. This is a, this is a shovel I stuck into the riverbed. This is about a foot and a half of water and I let the water run through here. I collected for the most part the flow rate of the river. Knowing the flow rate of the river, sitting out here for a certain given period of time, I could find out how much water went through these tights and correlate that to how much plastics are uh, found inside those tights. It's a very simple study, uh, nothing high-tech, as long as the river is uh, cooperating and safety is not a concern. So wouldn't it be nice if you had students design how this is going to happen? How, when, and where you can collect river water samples for microplastics? Student-driven research actually seems to hold a little bit stronger. Student involved in real research is the best way to teach students about science. Reading about it is one thing, doing it is another thing. And then let me know if you go out and do this. Give me some idea. I'm at Derby High School right now. I got an email right here and maybe we can, if you get some results, we can collaborate, share data, compare results. Oh yes, I guess that would be doing real science in the real world. So let's do some science.